right so uh, the first problem 1a a piston fitted in a cylindrical tube of cross sectional area with the other end of the tube open so you know the piston fitted at this end the piston fitted at this end right and this this end open clear the tube resonates with a fork of frequency 512 hertz meaning what the frequency of oscillation of this portion is 512 hertz yes or no right now <coughs> the piston is gradually pulled down this piston is gradually pulled down all right and it's found that after the piston descends a certain amount which is given to be 32 centimeters after the piston descends 32 centimeters the air column which increases by 32 centimeters once again is in resonance with the tuning fork right hmm? we want to be able to calculate the velocity of sound given this data okay see essentially what really transpires is no matter what the mode of oscillation of this is the frequency of oscillation of the column is still 512 hertz pulling it down by an amount 32 centimeters would really mean that there is an additional segment produced there is an additional segment which is produced from this to this that means what results is production of yet another segment that will be the next mode right if you move from one mode to another then it's about just another segment added right just another segment is added no matter what the mode of oscillation of this might have been right so this is just another segment added that means to the total length what is added is a lambda by 2 and this lambda by 2 must have been 32 centimeters so lambda must have been 64 centimeters right now given lambda the frequency of oscillation of this must be the same as that of the turing fork why because it is in resonance with the turing fork and therefore this gives us enough juice to calculate the speed of sound as n lambda n is 512 hertz the lambda obtained from this data is 0.64 meters these many meters per second would be the velocity of sound right it will again be in resonance after it moves down such that another segment gets added so from one mode to another the difference is just one segment that means each time a lambda by 2 gets added to the unit and it is brought into resonance do you all understand this the frequency never changes see if it is in resonance with this the frequency will still be 512 hertz only if I keep the length same then lam lambda will get altered and frequency will get altered of natural oscillation of the column right but if it is in resonance with the fork it will only be the mode of oscillation that will change the frequency will remain the same just an addition of a lambda instead of let us say being in the first harmonic it will get into the next harmonic second harmonic or third harmonic or, or third harmonic or fifth harmonic that is what would happen right but frequency will not change that is fundamental to be in resonance with the turing fork the column no matter in what mode of oscillation it be it has to oscillate with a frequency 512 words the only thing that will get accommodated is the length lambda will remain the same v is not changing n is not changing lambda will remain the same got me so this then would be the speed of sound computed from the data provided okay let us look into the next problem then one B <coughs> a source of sound whose frequency is gamma naught is moving with a speed V naught there is a source with frequency gamma naught is moving with a speed equal to V s is moving with a speed equal to V s right 
the wave travels to a fixed obstacle and is registered by a by a receiver that moves together with the source that means there is an observer o which is moving with the source means same velocity as that of the source <coughs> that moves together with the source means in sync with the source what frequency is registered by the receiver if the speed of sound is v so this is the fixed obstacle this is the fixed obstacle right first of all directly from the source what frequency will he register gamma not because there is no relative motion between the source and the observer now think of the reflected wave train right what frequency does the obstacle imagine the obstacle to be another observer another observer then what would be the frequency registered by this observer the frequency registered by this observer would be the actual frequency gamma not v minus v not the velocity of this observer is zero divided by v minus vs this is the source source to observer positive so v minus vs is the frequency registered by bless you by this obstacle right this is the frequency perceived by the wall by the obstacle the frequency reflected is going to be the same on reflection the frequency does not change so the if gamma 1 is the frequency perceived then gamma 1 is the frequency reflected on reflection gamma 1 is the frequency now as far as this observer is concerned this then becomes the new source this then becomes the new source call it s prime and it's at rest this new source is at rest right and it's emitting waves of frequency gamma 1 registered by an observer moving to the right with a velocity vs right now what then would be the perception of this observer for this frequency there would be doppler effect between o and s prime so then the gamma final gamma received by this say gamma 2 is going to be gamma 1 emitted by the new source gamma 1 into v minus v naught v naught is this v s which is from observer to source so negative so it will become plus v s divided by v minus velocity of source new source zero where gamma one is this value where gamma one is this value so as you can see this is going to become gamma naught into v plus v s divided by v minus v s that's the frequency registered by this observer after the train gets reflected from the obstacle got me is that okay or not okay? Let's provided this difference is not too large, he'll experience a beat phenomena. <coughs>
would be let's say when water fill gets filled to level 2 where the difference between level 1 and level 2 would just accommodate a full segment node to node segment yes or no that's the time from 1 to 2 2 would be the instance of a second resonance and the separation between 1 and 2 would be a lambda by 2 yes or no right so this is going to be a lambda by 2 So, all that we need to do is we need to find the time taken for water to go from here to there, travel a distance length lambda by 2, right? Travel a distance lambda by 2. See, V cubic meters per second in terms of length, in terms of length would be like V, <coughs> I divide by pi r squared. So, this would give me meters per second. This divided by the area of cross section would give me meters per second, yes or no? That is the rate at which length is covered in the tube. V by pi r squared is the rate at which length is covered in the tube. Yes or no? Yes. Sir. Yes. So then the time taken to cover lambda by 2 is going to be lambda by 2 divided by at what rate meters is covered every second. That means V by pi r squared, right? Yes or no? And <coughs> the velocity of sound is given to be Vs. So, can I say lambda must be Vs divided by the frequency n? Right. So, this lambda can be re replaced by Vs by n. Let us look at D then. Let us look at D. So far so good, right? See, there are two things that are of, often done with a tuning fork, right? You will find in problems, you know, there are, there are two terms that are used in connection with tuning fork, waxing and filing. Now, essentially what it really means is, if this is a tuning fork, and I place some wax over it. If I place some wax over it, then the frequency decreases. The frequency of the Turing fork decreases on waxing. The frequency decreases. Hmm? Huh? Sorry? The? It adds mechanical load. It adds mechanical load. The second thing is filing. So, if I file the tuning fork, this is filing, then the mechanical load decreases and the frequency increases. So, every time they tell you in a given problem, a tuning fork is waxed, you know that its frequency must have decreased. It's, if it is filed, the mechanical load on it decreases and its frequency increases. Okay. So, these are terms commonly used in uh, in connection with tuning forks. Now, a tuning fork A, a tuning fork A gives 5 beats per second when sounded with another tuning fork B of 556 hertz. So, there is B which is 256 hertz and there is tuning fork A whose frequency we do not know. All that we know is either N A minus N B is 5 or N B minus N A is 5, right? Because the beat frequency is given to be 5 hertz. So, either N A minus N B is going to be 5 or N B minus N A is going to be 5, one of the two things, right? That means the frequency of A would either be 251 or 261, right? These are the only two possibilities, yes. clear? Now, look. <coughs> When a little wax is placed on the tuning fork, then there are more beats per second. So, now if a little wax is placed on A, then N A decreases and number of beats is reduced to 0. That means number of beats is decreasing. Yes or no? In which case can it happen? In this case, in this case, if N A decreases, beats is? 
there are more beats per second okay okay i misread it the there are more beats per second when na decreases now it's this case in which if na is decreased number of beats will increase this is the case in which if na is decreased number of beats will increase so this must be the pertinent case for our problem right so then if this is relevant and if nb is 256 na therefore must be 251 na must be 251 hertz okay <coughs> let's look at e all right so far so good or are you confused sonometer wire see by the way the frequency of vibration of a sonometer wire is like a 1 by 2l in its fundamental mode square root of t by m m is the mass per unit length n this is the fundamental frequency right in a sonometer wire now a sonometer wire tensioned by 15 kg weight by 15 kg weight t is 15 kg weight produces 8 beats per second when sounded with a tuning fork when sounded with a tuning fork this is the sonometer wire nt is the frequency of the tuning fork and at a certain tension t equal to 15 kg weight the sonometer wire produces 8 beats per second with the tuning fork the sonometer that means either ns minus nt is 8 beats per second or nt minus ns is 8 beats per second these are the two possibilities right now when the tension is increased to 16 kg weight right 16 kg weight if it's increased to 16 kg weight it is found that it's in unison with the fork that means the number being in unison with the fork means beats is decreasing zero is becoming zero if it is in unison with the fork that means number of beats is zero that means beats have decreased beats have decreased it is found that beats decrease as t increases now as t increases what happens to ns increases that means it's found that as ns increases beats will decrease as ns increases beats are decreasing yes or no because as t is increasing ns is increasing now in which case will it happen second case in this case when ns is increasing nt minus ns is becoming zero yes or no right so this must be the relevant case right so let's say initially when 8 beats per second are heard nt is 1 by 2l root say <coughs> say initial tension t1 t1 is 15 kg weight divided by mass per unit length minus n of the tuning fork minus <coughs> oh sorry n of the tuning fork minus ns which is 1 by 2l root say t1 t1 is like a 15 kg weight divided by mass per unit length that's 8 beats per second right second case when this t becomes t2 t2 is like a 16 kg weight t2 is like a 16 kg weight then nt becomes equal to this right that means nt will be equal to 1 by 2l when t becomes t2 t2 by m is this yes or no no lost when t becomes 16 kg weight they are in unison that means frequency of the tuning fork will be the same as everything okay see there is a tuning fork and there is a sonometer wire the sonometer wire is producing its own frequency the tuning fork is has its own frequency when they are sounded together because of a differential frequency they will produce beats okay initially the tension is t1 which is 15 kg weight and uh, the beats they are producing is 8 so it will be either ns minus nt is 8 or nt minus ns is 8 now when the tension is increased what happens to the frequency of the sonometer wire it will increase right 
and it is found the beats are decreasing because if they are coming in unison that means the beats are becoming zero being in unison means zero beats that means as tension is increased it's found that the beats are decreasing so it will either be this or this as tension is increasing what is happening to ns increases so it is found that as ns increases beats are decreasing in which case will it happen it will happen in this case isn't it as ns increases this difference will decrease because nt is not going to change right nt is fixed for the folk now so applying this for the first case where sonometer wire tension is t1 which is 15 kg weight the frequency of the uh, sonometer wire would be 1 by ta 2l root 15 by m etc t1 by m is 8 right when t becomes t2 they are in unison that means frequency of the tuning fork should be the same as frequency of of the sonometer wire when t becomes t2 so now do you understand prakar okay now <coughs> what what we need what we could do here is this nt oh, can be replaced by 1 by 2l root t2 by m right 1 by 2l root m root t2 minus root t1 <coughs> is 8 Yes or no? Yes, sir. Hmm? <coughs> so 1 by 2L root M is 8 by this, right? Root M is 8 by root T2 minus T1. Right? Hmm? what we need is nt so now come back to this this 1 by 2l root tm can be plugged into this right so <coughs> 1 by 2l root m is nt see this 1 by 2l root m can be written as nt by root t, right? 1 by 2 L root m is nt by root t2. Is 8 divided by root t2 minus root t1? And nt you can calculate straight out of this nt would be root t2 which is so root 16 root. see again i don't have to multiply it with g because the g multiplied here and the g multiplied here would get cancelled so i can use t2 as 16 t1 as 15 there would be no dimensional inconsistency if i did that here because it's a ratio so nt then becomes 8 into this would be 4 divided by root t2 minus that means 4 minus root 15 isn't it you can multiply by 4 plus so 32 into 4 plus root 15 divided by 1 <coughs> see this is also roughly 4 for in an exam this is also roughly 4 so 4 plus 4 8 into 230 into 32 is 256 slightly less than 256 because instead of root 16 it's root 15 so you will take a number from the options given which is slightly less than 256 you don't have to calculate root 15 you know what i'm saying so this is just slightly less than 256 250 closest to 256 but less than 256 would be the best option if it's an mcq kind of a situation right okay Let's look at F. A uniform rope of length 12 meters twelve meters and a mass six kg hanging from the rigid support.
free end of the rope and a transverse wave pulse huh ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah uh. 2 kg mass of the rope is 6 kg right hmm a transverse pulse of wavelength 0.06 meters that means at this point say there is a pulse lambda 1 produced of 0.06 meters is produced at the lower end of the rope right <coughs> what is the wavelength of the pulse when it reaches the top of the rope right that means at this point what would be the wavelength at this point what would be the wavelength see realize that this is not a light rope this is a heavy rope so tension would be different at different points the tension at any point let's say p here would support the mass of this rope and the mass of the block so as you keep moving up more and more mass of the rope will get accumulated and the tension would increase as you keep moving up yes or no yes sir right so the velocity of the pulse velocity of a transverse pulse generated in a rope is root t by m m is hmm? don't worry as you keep moving up the rope it will support greater and greater mass of the rope therefore the tension at those points will increase right so if the tension increases as you keep moving from let's say point a to point b tension increases if tension increases what happens to the velocity of the transverse pulse it increases v proportional to root t however what does not change is the frequency of the pulse v changes v is n lambda v is n lambda n is the frequency of the pulse n will not change m is the mass per unit length oh prakar okay so n is not changing so lambda will be proportional to square root of t lambda would be proportional to square root of t which means can i say lambda 2 divided by lambda 1 would be square root of tension at b divided by tension at a tension at b divided by tension at a can i say that lambda proportional to root t nothing happens to the frequency is that okay or not okay right and tension at b what does it support it supports 6 kg and 2 kg 8 kg tension at a supports only 2 kg so can i replace t2 by 8 kg and t1 by 2 kg yes or no yes sir right so this would be root 8 by 2 which is 2 Are you okay with this or not? Okay. So lambda two then would be two times lambda one. Two times lambda one means point one two meters would be the wavelength when it reaches the top. I can explain again if you if you are baffled. No. Is that okay? Two sources. two sources give out identical notes of frequency 1360 hertz <coughs> note and a see loosely speaking they use it the same way tone is also about frequency note is also about frequency loosely that is what they use so even some sometimes they may tell you in a tuning fork this is the tone of the fork right <coughs> the 
an observer moving observer halfway between them moving from one to the other <coughs> here's four beats per second we will assume that the sources are at rest right so there is a source s1 producing n naught a source s2 both are stationary sources producing n naught hertz right there then is an observer which moves this way v naught and he registers 4 beats per second obviously the frequency from s1 would be different from frequency from s2 right so let us say frequency from s1 is going to be what actual frequency n naught v this is from source to observer so v minus v naught divided by v because v s is 0 that is from n1 from n2 if you recall the convention n naught this is from observer to source so it will become v plus v naught divided by v and the difference in these two ends is given to be 4 beats per second that means n naught by v and this difference is 2 v naught this difference is 2 v naught into 2 v naught is 4 and this gives you the velocity v naught that you are seeking. Right? V is velocity of sound is given to be 340 meters per second. So, this will become 4, 8, V naught is half. V naught therefore will become half, half a meter per second. Huh? I will come to that also. Huh? ratio musical interval means ratio of frequency in in acoustics interval does not mean difference it means ratio in acoustics interval means ratio musical interval means ratio of frequencies not difference of frequencies because musicians did not know enough of mathematics so looked upon interval as ratios we accepted them without resistance ok so musical interval is always ratio if the musical interval is 2 then they are said to be an octave remember that yeah one octave apart ok refer to problem H <coughs> there is a tuning fork let us say placed at A and the sound from A reaches a point B along two different paths. Say there is a ADB and there is an AEB, ADB and AEB. There could be a conduit is not it? There could be a conduit through which it would travel is not it? Do not break your heads over trivia. When ADB is greater than AEB by 17 centimeters, if ADB minus AEB is 17 centimeters, then what results is silence at B. There is interference, right? There is destructive interference, there is destructive interference, right? <coughs> When the difference is difference in the paths, see, let me refer to this as delta x. When delta x is 17 centimeters, there is silence at B. When delta x is 34 centimeters, there is a sound at B, means large sound, right. Third, when delta x is 51 centimeters, then again there is silence there is silence right now which clearly means that every 17 centimeter path differs by lambda by 2 see which means 
destructive interference part difference must be lambda by 2 17 centimeters and when the difference be becomes 34 centimeters the path difference is 2 into lambda by 2 that means lambda constructive interference delta x is 51 centimeters means 3 into lambda by 2 there is destructive interference that means very clearly lambda by 2 must be 17 centimeters lambda by 2 must be 17 centimeters yes or no yes, sir. right so if lambda by 2 is 17 centimeters lambda for the wave must be 34 centimeters right and what's given is the frequency of the fork if the velocity of sound is 340 meters per second frequency of the fork would be v by lambda that means 340 divided by 0.34 1000 hertz 1000 hertz is the frequency of the tuning fork that's why I, I insisted don't let me draw a diagram the diagram doesn't matter when you could have drawn it zigzag 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 it would still be the same got me a whistle is whirled in a circle of 100 centimeters radius this is a circle of radius r 1 meter radius 1 meter radius <coughs> and this whistle this whistle traverses the circular path twice per second that means twice per second means 4 pi radians per second 4 pi right each each complete revolution would be 2 pi radians so 2 pi into 2 4 pi radians per second must be the omega of the whistle that means the tangential velocity this is the source must be r omega yes or no vs must be r omega right the tangential velocity from instant to instant what is the musical interval between the highest and the lowest pitch if the velocity of sound is 332 meters per second that means say in the plane of the circle there is an observer o there is an observer o very clearly see draw two tangents from o draw this tangent and this tangent see when the source is here it's directly approaching the observer maximum relative velocity towards so this will give me the highest frequency and when the source is here source is here then maximum relative velocity away maximum relative velocity away and that will give me the lowest frequency yes or no right so then the frequency of this divided by this will be the musical interval right say this was position 1 this was position 2 velocity of observer is 0 in position 1 in position 1 what's the frequency n1 the actual frequency n0 n0 into v minus v0 divided by v minus vs vs in this case is from source to observer so positive into the frequency is going to be n0 into v minus velocity of observer divided by v minus this is away away from so so minus vs so that's going to become plus vs clear so the musical interval would be n1 by n2 would be the musical interval musical interval is defined as the ratio of frequencies v plus v s divided by v minus v s is going to be the musical interval got me ah, these are directly approaching the observer maximum relative velocity if it was not this position then it would be v s but a component of v s v s cos theta then the relative velocity would be less isn't it say if it was no, not this position but this position then v s would be like this not along this tangent 
and then from source to observer if you'll have to take a component of vs which would be vs cos theta relative velocity would be lower in non tangential positions yes or no that's the reason are you okay with this or not okay right Right? Refer to problem 2, which is a situation that deploys Doppler's effect. Okay. Two trains A and B simultaneously start moving along parallel tracks. We will assume that there is hardly a separation between the two parallel tracks. If nothing is given, we will assume they are very close. It means, let us say, there is A and there is B. A starts with a constant acceleration of 2 meters per second square. From rest, starting from rest. Whereas, B starts with the same acceleration, 2 meters per second squared. but with an initial velocity of 40 meters per second. That means, B will immediately overtake A after T equal to 0, because B has a higher initial velocity, right. So they have the same acceleration, so B will remain ahead of A all the time, right. 20 seconds after the start, passenger of A hears whistle of B. That means, it is as if B is the source, A is the observer, right. It is as if this is the source and this is the observer. Twenty seconds later, A hears a whistle. That means, that whistle must have been emitted earlier, because sound does not travel at infinite meters per second, right. Is not it? A sound heard by A at t equal to 20 seconds must have been emitted by B earlier than t equal to 20 seconds, yes or no? Yes, right? Hmm? And since B is ahead of A, that pulse must have travelled backwards to intercept A, right? Is not it? So, say when B was here, it emitted a certain pulse at time t equal to t naught, which has to be less than 20 seconds, which has to be less than 20 seconds. Prior to 20 seconds, it emitted a pulse. And when B was here, A must have been somewhere here, behind A, at t equal to t naught, right? A was here, the pulse then started to move backwards. See, it moves in all directions, but to intercept A, that portion of the pulse must have traveled this way at a velocity equal to velocity of sound, right. So, when B was here at t equal to t naught, A must have been behind A somewhere here. The pulse A continues to move this way, the pulse from B continues to move this way and at t equal to 20 seconds, at t equal to 20 seconds, the pulse was received by A the observer. Are you there with me or not? I can explain again if I have gotten you lost. Are you all right with whatever I have communicated this far? Right? Hmm? So, pulse emitted at time t equal to t naught less than 20 seconds is intercepted by A at t equal to 20 seconds. Right? Which means, for how long did the pulse travel? for 20 minus t naught seconds, the pulse must have travelled for 20 minus t naught seconds, clear? Hmm? To reach this position of A, to reach this position of A. Now, let me locate this position of A where it received the pulse because observer when it receives the pulse, source when it emits the pulse, these are two important positions for you to apply Doppler's effect. So, I must know what on earth is B doing when it emitted the pulse in the sense, what was its velocity when it emitted the pulse. So, in order to know the velocity of B, 
when it emitted the pulse i would know the i would have to know the instant when it emitted the pulse because if i know that it emitted the pulse at t equal to t not then i can calculate its velocity u plus at not at this instant velocity of the source and at t equal to 20 seconds of course i know the velocity of a at 40 meters per second this way isn't it but i would have to find out t not I would have to know T naught so that I know the state of the source B when it emitted the pulse which was later on received by the observer A. Clear? Yes, <clears throat> okay. So which means now the problem reduces to a kinematic status. So I will have to solve the problem kinematically. Right? So first of all let me mark the distances. A it received the pulse here right at t equal to 20 seconds in 20 seconds the distance traveled by a must be half of 2 into 20 squared half of 80 squared right which is 400 meters are you okay with this or not okay right b when it emitted the pulse it was here at t equal to t naught And in T naught seconds, I can calculate the distance traveled by B, ut plus half at squared, right? L2 <coughs> must be 40 T naught plus half of 2 into T naught squared, which is 40 T naught plus T naught squared. Yes or no? Are you fine with this? That means sound must have gone from B to A. This must have covered this distance, which is this minus this, right? This distance must have been the distance covered by sound from this position to this position to be intercepted by A at this instant, right? At t equal to 20 seconds. And this distance very clearly is 40 t naught plus t naught squared minus. 400 and this is the distance traveled by sound in 20 minus t naught seconds right from here to here sound travels for how long 20 minus t naught seconds at the rate of how many meters per second 322 meters per second at the rate of 322 meters per second it covers this distance right that means this distance must be 322 meters per second that's the velocity with which sound travels and for how long for 20 minus t naught seconds this is the this is the equation that we need to solve to know t naught yes or no yes. very good so let's solve this right ah 322 362 t naught t naught squared 362 t naught uh, minus <coughs> 6440 6840 minus 6840 equal to 0 if I make a mistake you fix it ok so I just need to solve for T naught you need to solve for T naught T naught is 18 seconds, right? Oh, you solve using Sri Dharacharya. I am not stopping you. <laughs> okay don't bother about it calculator now you got the answer is right my <laughs> yours or mine you, <laughs> you got it 17 okay I'll, I, I know how to check this if it's right or not 14 it cannot be because if it ends in 7 this ends in 4 this ends in 9 9 plus 4 13 it cannot give me 0 it would have give me, given me 3 in the units place, not 0 in the units place. So, so 17 is rubbish. 
God bless you. 18 seconds, right? So then, now is it right? <laughs> then the then the velocity of B would be U plus 80, right? 40 plus 36. 76 meters per second is the velocity of the source when it emitted the pulse. 76 meters per second is the velocity of source when it emitted the pulse. The observer when it received the pulse that was at t equal to 20 seconds would be 40 meters per second is the velocity of the observer when it right so this is velocity of observer is 40 meters per second. Now you are ready to deploy Doppler's effect. So the frequency apparent is actual frequency v minus v naught. V naught is from observer to source, so negative. So it will become plus 40 divided by V minus Vs. Again, opposite to the vector SO, so it will become plus 76. Yes or no? Yes, sir. And you can calculate the apparent frequency. V is given 322 and you can calculate the frequency from this. Right? Let me look at the next one. So far, so good. Is that okay or not okay? There is a train A which crosses a station at the rate of 40 meters per second as shown. This is like a source emitting a short pulse of frequency 596 hertz. Right? <coughs> then there is another parallel track. And the separation between these two tracks is given to be 99 meters. <coughs> when train A whistles, B is 152 meters away from the station. This is given to be 152 meters. Velocity of sound, velocity of sound is given to be 330 meters per second. <coughs> Calculate the frequency of the pulse heard by the driver B. The driver B moves with a constant speed of 40 meters per second. Observer, 40 meters per second. So when A is here, it emits a pulse of frequency 596 hertz and moves away with a velocity of 40 meters per second as shown. At that instant, this was t equal to 0. This is also t equal to 0. At that instant, B is headed in this direction with a velocity of 40 meters per second and moves in this direction. Right? Now, the sound pulse moves in all possible directions. At some position, of B, it will be intercepted by B, right? Let us say the pulse which is emitted in all directions has to travel this length to be intercepted by B at say B prime. While B goes from B to B prime, the pulse goes from A to B prime in the same time T seconds, right? <coughs> so this is the relevant position for the observer. This is the relevant position for the source. This angle is theta. Velocity of the observer here is V naught 40 meters per second. So if I have to apply the Doppler's effect, I would have to know V naught cos theta, the velocity along the line joining the source in the observer. This angle is also theta. I would have to know V s cos theta. So theta I need to know at the point where the pulse intercepts the observer. Right? Then I can deploy Doppler's effect. I will have to take velocity. So that means I would have to know this position very fairly. Suppose pulse has to travel for t seconds, b also will travel for t seconds, right? In t seconds, the pulse travels a distance 330t, it travels at a velocity equal to velocity of sound. The pulse travels this distance 330t, whereas the observer travels this distance 40t. 
Yes or no? Hmm? That means this length realize that this length then would be 152 minus 40 t would be this length right therefore now if I know t then I would know cos theta because then cos theta would be this divided by this I would have to know t then right now one of the things that you can do is the following to calculate t you apply 99 squared plus 152 minus 40 t squared equal to 330 t whole squared quadratic you can solve this quadratic in t once you know t you know this length by this length right and I tell you if you did that it would be dumb see there are times you should behave like a practical individual not like a research research physics scholar Okay, because a physics scholar, you know, a typical physics, that means essentially I mean to tell you is that you should behave like an engineer. Engineers are practical, physicists are impractical. Okay, so if you have to be a physicist, then you would solve this quadratic in T. You can solve this quadratic in T with such bulky, unwieldy coefficients. All right, but if you are an engineer, this is not what you would think you will at least take a chance with something else. You would be a keen observer at least. You will say this is 99 meters which is like a 33 into 3. Okay. Which means you would expect this right angle triangle to be a 3, 4, 5 triangle. 33 into 3, 33 into 4, 33 into 5. Why is it 99 and not goddamn 100? 99 because it is 33 into 3. So let us check that out, maybe we are all wrong, but see, suppose this is 33 into 3, then you would expect this to be 33 into 5, that means you would expect this to be 165 meters, that means t would be half, now at t equal to half, this should become 33 into 4, then all is good, at t equal to half, this is 20, this is 132, which is 33 into 4, so t equal to half is good, you know what I am saying? So, t equal to half suits the bill. I will explain. See, this is 99. 33 into 3. You would expect this to be 33 into 5. That means you would expect t to be half. Now, if t is half, this is 33 into 5. This should be 33 into 4. Then, what you have assumed is good. <coughs> now, t equal to half, this is 132, which is 33 into 4. That means t equal to half is good. You know what I am saying? Don't give all this logic in a school exam. Just say solving. <laughs> solving. We get t equal to half. Now where do you solve? You write things here and scribble it. Now I solved it but I cut it there because I wanted things to be neat for you. <laughs> okay. So t equal to half is good, right? So t equal to half means the triangle is like 3, 4, 5. Cos theta anyways would be 4 by 5 then. <coughs> because if it's 3, 4, 5, then this must be 4 by 5 cos theta must be 4 by 5 yes or no yes. right and therefore <coughs> all that you need to do is the actual free apparent frequency is going to be n naught v minus v naught you will take v naught cos theta but minus v naught cos theta why because it is from observer to source so plus v naught cos theta divided by v minus v s 40 cos theta from source to observer so for v naught 40 cos theta v is 340 v naught is 40 cos theta is 4 by 5 and a can be obtained from these considerations is that okay or not okay yes. <coughs> <coughs> Shall we move? <coughs>